I've been called a terrorist. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. It was in my eighth grade social studies class, actually. Now, of course, you may ask, why was the girl with big blue glasses and bangs called a terrorist? And the answer is, I said that women were oppressed. A privileged eighth grade boy called me a terrorist because I dared to tell him a fact, that the wage gap existed, and that on average, women were paid less than men for doing the same job. What is feminism, by the way? As defined by the dictionary and my AP European history textbook, feminism is the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of equality of the sexes. You heard me right. It's not hating men and it's not female supremacy. Despite what some of my male coworkers seem to think, feminism is not similar to communism, like at all. It is not some kooky liberal concept. It is simply equality for everyone and anyone. And I am proud to say that I am a feminist. Let me point out something I'm sure some of you are thinking, and you might not even realize you're thinking, that I'm not as professional as a man would be. I'm standing up here as a 15-year-old girl putting myself on display, and I'm terrified. I mean, of course I am. I'm in front of a huge audience, and I'm vulnerable. But the crowd is not my biggest worry. I'm not only scared to mess up, I'm scared to be sneered at, mocked. In my experience, when a man messes up in front of a crowd, people laugh as if to say, ha ha, how funny. When a woman messes up, she isn't seen as funny, but is seen as less legitimate. Women just aren't taken as seriously as men, and it's been this way for hundreds of years. In 17th century Europe, when women tried sharing their ideas during the Enlightenment, men would not listen to what they had to say. Instead, men would publish articles about girl, how women were biologically inferior. Women were told to be good daughters, good mothers, and good wives. A woman who wanted to pursue an education was ridiculed. Men held a natural dominance, and women could never come close. They weren't supposed to. They weren't supposed to try. They weren't supposed to think they could. 17th century Europe was not the only time that women faced the obstacle of men assuming dominance. Currently, the 2016 Fortune 500 list of CEOs was only 4.2% female. Women are not seen as people who could handle the pressure of running a business due to our hormones and our naturally inferior bodies and minds. But why? Ask yourself, does this make sense? Does this percentage sound fair to you? Why is there the suspicion that women are inferior? Institutional ideas of how the sexes should behave start young. If you walk down an aisle of a toy store with toys marketed for boys, you'll see trucks and tools and things that are considered manly. If you walk down an aisle aimed at girls, you'll see cooking toys and cleaning toys and dolls that reflect unrealistic body standards. These toys tell girls that they're supposed to cook and clean and look good, while well, the boys' toys tell them that they're supposed to build and be tough. My mom didn't get me only cooking and cleaning toys. I played with matchbox cars and plastic tools, but I had my Barbie dolls too. The ingrained idea of a man's place and a woman's place has been around for so long that no one knows any different or even dares to question it. These gender biases are not only seen in children's toys, they're on our magazine covers, too. Covers for women's magazines advertise looking good for men and pleasing men, and not about women being the best versions of themselves or expressing themselves. As a girl who grew up insecure about her body, I always thought that I could never find someone unless I looked better. I felt that I would never be good enough until I gained a man's approval. I wish I was only taught to need just my approval. We're all susceptible to believing this, and it's so harmful to our self-confidence. I remember going to a Hannah Montana concert at age five and thinking that I could never be famous or accomplish anything like her unless I was skinnier and prettier. May I repeat that I was five? Exposing young girls to advertisements like these is unhealthy because it pressures them to conform to unrealistic standards, as I thought I had to for so much of my life. Like I said before, it's not our fault that we don't know to challenge these gender roles. They've been set for so long, and we were raised with them. 
In AP European History, we read a passage written by a woman that really rubbed me the wrong way. Here's a quote from the passage that I feel is an accurate summary. There is something so unpleasant in female self-sufficiency. Well, I was raised by a single mother, a very pleasant, self-sufficient female. There was no man to take care of us. My mom's mother and father raised her to know how to support herself in the real world. She raised me alone and she raised me well. I know how to fend for myself. I've been using tools since I could hold them and I've always had the motivation to work for myself, much like my mother. Personally, I don't want to be a housewife while well, my husband works and provides for the family. Not that there's anything wrong with making that choice. But I am more than a maid and a mother. I am strong and I am independent and I only need a man to kill the bugs. So what can we do to stop these imposed gender roles? We need to start young. If you have a son and he wants a doll, get him that doll. If you have a daughter and she wants a race car, get her that race car. Raise young girls to love themselves and take care of themselves and teach young boys to respect girls. Don't ignore the existence of sexual abuse. Don't impose sexist dress codes in schools that shame girls for being comfortable and confident with who they are. Telling girls that they need to cover up so as not to distract boys tells them that their bodies are not something of which they should be proud. Erase the double standard that a woman who saves herself from marriage is a prude, but a woman who doesn't is a slut. Stop, shaming men, stop praising men for sleeping with a lot of women when you turn around and shame girls for doing the same. Teach what is polite and what is crossing a boundary. Telling someone they look very nice is polite. A man calling out of his car, hey baby, nice rack, is crossing a line and threatening. Here's an example of wrong. When a much older man said to my coworker Brandon, I feel bad for all the guys working here. I don't know how you could focus around such hot girls. Well, he looked our coworker Madison, who was 15 at the time, up and down. Another example of wrong is when a much older man said to me that if he was just four years younger, he would fall in love with me. He couldn't have been more than 50. Well, less than 50. I responded with my age, which was 15. He said, add a few, and then just left. In the time that he was there, I had to stay on the phone with my mother while I took out the garbage because he wouldn't stop staring at me, and I didn't feel safe in the place I was working. After he left, I called my mom crying from the bathroom. These men are examples of why I'm scared to go out alone at night and why my mom worries so much for my safety. But most importantly, these men are examples of why we need to make a change. The most urgent thing we need to do is to show all generations how to change their actions. Ladies, put up a fight if someone says something objectifying or threatening to you. If a man catcalls you, don't let him get away with it. Don't let him think you don't mind or that it's okay behavior. Us girls can put up a fight. Women should be able to be themselves and, not, and do so comfortably. We should be able to challenge men and not be scared to do so. And men, don't expect women to depend on you. Understand the fact that we can be our own person and run our own lives and treat us with some respect. Don't objectify us and don't assume that we want to sleep with you. Together, we can erase the idea that feminism is man-hating and that women are just bodies. These are all examples of what we need to change, how we can do it, and why we need to. We are all more than maids and mothers and objects for men's pleasure. We are all strong, we are all independent, and we are all damn proud to be women. Thank you.